Hi, I am Cardinal Dr. Elizabeth Samantha Rothschild Judge. Today, we are going to talk about something relational, marriage, and fidelity. We call this blessed success. And that's another story, but either way. What is fidelity? Is faithful. Fidelity, as far as a marriage is concerned, a relationship. We think it's a requirement. So for fidelity to be a requisite for the existence of a relationship, it must be declared and enacted. So let's see here. What what do people call cheating? That would that would get us to the bottom of it. What do people call cheating? Some people say, well, if it was just uh, an affair where there was just sex, then I don't really care about that. That's not really cheating or an affair. Or another may say, well, it, it's finances. But that's what it boils down to. The fidelity of a union boils down to what I call FES. F-E-S. Finances emotions, and sex. Bless fest. Bless the finances, bless the emotions, and bless the sex. So those are the three components, the major components of any marriage, any relationship that is deeply rooted or, or basically is like just a real thing. So um, what part of this, what part of this do we say, well, if someone shares or does these things, then they're cheating? Because uh, my personal perspective, I, I look at it like this, men have, uh, and they're faced with a lot of different things, but their sexual organs on the outsides of their bodies. So that means they feel a touch at all time when they have on underwear, when they have on pants, there's a touch at all time. Whereas a woman's sexual organs are on the inside of her body. So there's no constant contact. And so a man would be more susceptible to a sexual affair than a woman would be. So I'm a little lenient when it comes to saying the whole sex is cheating thing. Cumulatively, for a relationship to be considered one of faith, I feel that there must be blessed fest, blessed finances, blessed emotions, and blessed sex. So, um, Let's take a look at uh, 1 Peter 3 and 1. It says, wives, likewise be submissive to your own husband, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. So you look at a relationship where the woman wants to keep her marriage, the man messes up, she's willing to forgive 70 times 7, 80 times 8, you know, whatever it takes to make the marriage work. That's about commitment, that loyalty, that duty to your marriage. And so what if the woman doesn't want to say anything because the word of God has told her to not say anything? Well, then we need to address those issues where persons are ridiculed for that particular thing, where persons are... Uh, aware that other people know about something that may be happening in their personal lives. And so they make a big mare out of it. And uh, so then this woman who's being silent and praying for her conduct to win her husband over to her is being criticized for being obedient to the word of God. Um, another thing is when a woman is silent, Sometimes men can become insecure and think that the woman doesn't care 
But uh, if you wanted her to say something, why were you so secretive and outlandish in her finding out? Secretive when you did it and then outlandish with, when she found out about it. So um, my perspective, I, you know, I'll talk about me because I'm not in a relationship. I'm not in a marriage because I understand what is toxic and what is not toxic. I know the difference between a relationship and date rape, becoming a marriage with legal ties or something. And I'm not willing to be deceived by anyone for any reason. And um, although we can extend opportunity and chances to persons, when you know better, do better, move around on it. So I, I, even though that I'm not in, the, in a marriage or in a relationship, I'm not engaged at this time in my life, then uh, I'm still going to comment this to say, um, for me, uh, as I aforementioned, the sex part is not really a big deal. I mean, if he, you know, you ever had to go to the bathroom so bad you couldn't hold it and you barely made it, okay, that's a husband who really, really needs to have sex and barely makes it to his wife in order to remain faithful. But what if you have a husband that travels and, uh, you know, 20 hours is a long enough time, but when you're flying 20 hours, that's even longer to get back to. So what do you do? when you have a man who can't wait till he gets back to you. or for you men a woman that can't wait till you get home or back into the city for sex so some persons such as myself are a little more lenient when it comes to describing cheating as sex with other people however i do hold sacred emotions and finance those are things i hold sacred Blessed fast. Now, don't get me wrong. The sex is blessed as well. But, you know, we're human. We're human. And because each person has free will, just because I can wait or just because I can be abstinent, just because I can be celibate, practice celibacy, does not mean that everyone has that much self-control. And not everyone has that much self-control to say they can wait to get to the person they promised that they would only have sex with in order to have sex. However, if someone's spending their money, if, if, if I'm in a relationship and he's spending his money on her, okay, that's like taking my money and spending on her if I'm putting in on anything. So if I'm putting in on the cable bill, even though all the bills are paid, there's still my cable bill money that you went off and cheated with when you gave her anything. So I look at things like that. For me, uh, that defines the difference between a true relationship and maybe a fling that you had. And a fling that should pass, that lingers and causes problems, is definitely date rape. Okay. So, um, and emotions. <clears throat> if a person is upset and they're feeling bad, they need some encouragement. Well, whomever it is that they can go to to feel confident in themselves is the person that they need to be married to. So, if I'm married to a person, I require that they come to me. And if they're going to anybody else, if they can't even go to their mother, if if we're married, I'm the only woman that he should be coming to for any sort of emotional support and should not even care about how anybody else feels about it, neither their emotional capacity. Because if it was just sex, then at the point of orgasm, it's over with everybody get back to your life. That's just my perspective on it. Um, so as far as the emotions, as far as finances, um, hey, if he paid for the hotel room, then he cheated on. It's not the sex that he had in the hotel room with someone I don't know, but it's the money that he paid on the hotel room. So things, um, those three things taken out of the house. And I say anyone that can be strong and self-controlled and maintained in a dedicated, committed relationship, a marital union, who can adhere to bless, fast, bless your finances, bless your emotions, and bless your sex, and not do that with anyone other than to whom they are married, that is the most wonderful and beautiful thing. Now, me, I'm a liberal, so uh, it would be blessed. <laughs> I'm just blessed, emotions. What, 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 what is it? The finances. So I don't know how I would acronym that, but for me, it's bless the finances and bless the emotions because just as quickly as someone can go and use a porta potty, they can have sex. Okay. Now, um, the last thing I want to cover is, 
wives being silent that their conduct may win their husband over. Okay. Um, when a man has an affair, whomever he's with, that has nothing to do with the wife. Me personally, I'm not going to go looking for a person. I don't need to see them. I don't need to know them. And what's more is when a man decides he's going to have extramarital affairs, he needs to be sure that those persons don't try to become involved in his with his wife. See, me, I'm very strict about that. I don't want to know your friends association. I don't need to meet anybody. I don't care if y'all went to school together. I don't care if y'all used to live together and then broke up, whatever it is. Me is the only person that matters to me in my relationship. So a woman that would have an affair with someone I'm with and then go out of her way for me to have to know who she is. Not only did she waste my time, but she basically helped me describe my marriage as a date rate, because quite definitely a man that I'm faithful to would not allow other women to stalk me and harass me. And if he does, that means he's an accessory to that criminal activity. And we just have to be real about what toxicity is and what rape is. Okay, because many persons marry their date rapists, uh, marry persons that committed grand larceny against them and stay married to them 25, 30 years just so they can either become a bishop just by title or um, portray like they have living the perfect lifestyle to others. And me, I believe in believe in being real with Christ. So um, where I would be silent if my man cheated on me does not depict fear. And so some persons would think, well, that's something where she's exhibiting fear. Let's go after her and antagonize her when really I can defend all aspects of my presence, be it with a man or solo. And a real relationship is based on trust and security as well. And if a man can't secure me from these evils that he decided he wanted to partake of, well, then that would let me know that he has evil devices against me. How do y'all feel about that? Let me know. Y'all have a great day.